For the entirety of this video, I want you to think of one-on-one -on -one as a technology company. It's a blank canvas for educators and trainers, and they're the artists that paint on it. Now, how does it compete with its closest competitor, Edifocal? What's the matter people? And in this video, we will be breaking down one-on-one -on -one educational service, IPO. That will be opening on August 12th and will be closing on the 19th. But it's best to get before then because more than likely as it opening going close. So if you're interested in understanding a little bit more about the company before you go trade money in uh, IPO, um, stick around. Don't forget to smash the like button, definitely share, subscribe and let's begin. Alright, so basic overview of the company. So its name is One on One Educational Service Limited. And the main broker is Sajikor Investments. And the co-broker, as of the time I'm recording in this video, is JMMB. But I believe that going into this week, there'll be more brokers that will be able to offer it. But as the time I'm recording this video, Sajikor and JMMB is the main brokers right now that you can buy it on say they're offering 380 million ordinary shares um in hopes of raising 358 million dollars as i already said in the intro that it's going to be open at 9 a.m august 12 2022 and it will be closing on august 19 4 30 p.m i doubt it will reach august 19 so as I say, as you probably open, it going close at the same time. So just try getting before the actual date. All right, so the per share allocation, which just means um, who get what at what price, everybody else except Sajikor will be getting it at 80 cents per share. They're just converting the loan that they had got from Sajikor into shares and they're getting it at a discount of 80 cents per share. However, each allocation is different. So the allocation goes as follows. Um, the conversion reserve, which is the loan asset, is $87 million at 80 cents. Everything else, so key strategic partners, surgical reserve, those are for like employees, teachers and trainers that are listed on the JTA. And you have employee reserves, which is the employees of the company. And you have general public, which is me and you. So the key strategic partners get 60 million, the Sajikor reserve get 30 million, the teachers get 30 million, employee reserve is also 30 million, and the general public is $121,250,000. That's a small amount. I know persons that can buy everything. So that's a small amount. As I say, if you're going to be interested in this IPO, you might want to get in before but as i said these are the days when you know i appreciate the teachers because you know ugh, teachers them rich and over that rich back to school but let's dive deeper down into the company's history and i know there's a lot but just some key things that i found that was really interesting and we're going to start back from all the way to 2013 when they started with two angel investors with just five million dollars and then they had a series of fundraising uh as you can see you have 2014 they raised another 12 million dollars and they got a few awards you know best practice etc etc they secured a client which is cable and wireless um for five years and i just going fast forward really up to close to like 2019 when everything was going haywire not for them though because there is additional 40 million in funding from sajikor and they started securing partners with edx and atlantic training to bring an array of industry standard courses to the caribbean so they partnered with external parties that are bigger to like start getting actual courses that are that are like top standard to carry into the caribbean and then as 2020 2021 got a bit spicy because now they partner with the ministry of education for jamaica bahamas and other caribbean countries like st lucia and so on to like help them with the online schooling system and then they also partner with the government to like free summer school and those stuff so they've been doing good stuff and one thing that i liked about it is that they've already secured 
contracts with the government is not a hearsay like some other company or whatever are we just speculating because you know, you're in the circle they actually have legit contracts with a lot of government not just locally but also internationally and as i go further you'll understand that they don't necessarily just cover pip students or persons from grade four five six currently they do from maybe primary come all the way down to you finish um six farm and then go to the business side but september coming they're also going to do kindergarten so basically from them born till them are left high school they have a package for them so yeah. now we're going to go to their directors so you have them executive director which is ricardo allen we know him he's the face that we see most they have non-executive directors like michael barnard john bailey karen vaz and Miska McLeod Hines. Sorry for my your name. Sorry, Miss Hines. And we have Carl Grandstand as an independent director and Tyrese Wilson. And of course, we know Tyrese Wilson. Tyrese Wilson is the CEO and president of iCreate. So there is that. And their mentor, Mr. Douglas Oren, is a non executive director of grace kennedy before that he was actually chairman and ceo of the company so he's in good hands now we get all that rambling out of the way we need to kind of understand how the company makes money so we need to understand their products and one on one has several products but the best way i can do is to break it down for you guys in the most simplest way i can they have two main divisions for their company products they have business to customer and they have business to business these divisions are then further broken up into four categories so for the business to customer you have one-on-one -on -one for individual the other fall under the business to customer and then for business to business, you have one-on-one -on -one for enterprise, you have one-on-one -on -one for teams, and you have one-on-one -on -one for government. So the one-on-one -on -one for individual is basically aimed to connect teachers to students at various levels of learning from kindergarten to grade 12 for a fee, of course. And this should be launched in their third quarter, which is going to be somewhere around like September to December. Um, for the one-on-one -on -one for trainers and professionals, this connects professionals to the appropriate trainers and courses in easy to use personalized learning online platforms. Trainers and training organizations help to develop their marketing and to sell their courses, customers to both old and new. This is basically like, say I have a course, which I do. <laughs> So I have a course and I decided I want to use their platform. I can just simply put my course on their platform and then you can just go on, buy it, use it, can get chit chat with me back and forth, etc. And then they just charge me a commission per course sell. So that's what it means or that's what they were trying to explain in their complicated explanation so that's for like one-on-one -on -one for customers are from business to customers now for the business to business which consists of the one-on-one -on -one for teams the one-on-one -on -one for enterprise and one-on-one -on -one for government so let's go so the one-on-one -on -one for teams has three products underneath that so you have the one-on-one -on -one online learning platform for businesses and it's simply a place where organizations of all sizes can train employees in area of deficiency. The RD, you can like, as a customer, you can come on there and create your own courses and so on and so forth. Or you can use their gallery of over 10,000 courses of which a thousand is already certified. So that's that. You also have one-on-one -on -one e learning content which as i say is basically them just developing content for the company around the parameters that they choose and then they have one-on-one -on -one content licensing which is practically the same thing if you look at practically the same thing as the first one it's just that this course has over 20,000 local courses and it's in over 14 languages to help 
improve employees. Now we have one-on-one -on -one for enterprises. And this is where my introduction came from. It's like a blank canvas. So I don't want to make this, I want to talk to you guys. So it's like a blank canvas. So just picture a blank canvas and then a company can come on, put their brand. So let's say, hmm, what's company can use? So let's say Jamaican Brawler, they, they, they have a website. And rather than building a website from scratch, you know, you're going to need web developers, a bug, other stuff that I really don't know. But, and then you're going to need capital. That's like one of the biggest things. You're going to need capital. What one on one offers is that, yo, you can come, you will do everything, or you guys can personalize it. So, it won't have the one on one logo, it won't have anything of that sort. You just come in, just go so bam, they'll do everything in the background, but on the face of the platform it will be your thing so you're going to see jamaica broilers them chicken them baby chicken them always do bug other things yeah so you're not gonna see it like if you just go on it you won't necessarily see one on one you'll see jamaica broilers i hope that kind of makes sense but yeah and it's a pretty cool thing because and they say actually actually do have a lot of clients that we probably know but they can't disclose it so you know there's that and then last and possibly one of the foundational core of their company is the one-on-one -on -one for government and this is in two categories they have two products for them so you know they have the one-on-one -on -one for government which essentially helps to digitalize helps to digitalize digitalize helps to digitalize government stuff if you, if you work in government i have my barrages of documents that need digitization they do that so they help them digitize it and it's not just for jamaica alone it's just every developing country that they can get them hands on apparently so this helping to digitalize the government ecosystem and yeah and then them also have the classroom in a box which who better to explain it than the CEO himself? Well, I'll tell you something. You know, Chantal, we believe that and we've seen the numbers. 54% of Jamaicans have access to internet. You know, 46% don't. And so we have created a solution. We call it the classroom in a box. And, you know, I must tell you why this means so much for me. I'm from a place called Rio Buena Trelawney. Uh, where, you know, I spent a lot of my time in Jackson Town, Trelawney, and, you know, it's deep rural. We didn't have internet. We didn't have light up to 2004. So we created a solution that not only works without electricity for eight hours, but it also downloads a segment of the internet on a device. I place it anywhere in the world, and you put it there. People can connect and access online learning. And the power of this device will not only assist Jamaica and Jamaicans, but it will go even beyond that to assist people in developing countries globally. I want you to think about other areas of the Caribbean, Central and South America, and also Africa. So our focus is not only to reach the ones who have access to internet, but the ones who don't in a way that is easy to use and convenient. In fact, Chantel, we've just secured a 15, a 14 million innovation grant from the development of Bank of Jamaica to expand the use of this box and the commercialization of this box. So you should see that being rolled out in the near future. It's going to have a lot of impact. Think about children's home. Think about the, the correctional facilities, the prisons. Think about the schools. Um, so many schools don't have access to internet. And you know what I like about the box, Chantel? Even if you have internet in a school, there's usually limited bandwidth. And so one of the innovations that we've added to the box is that it allows you to stream the content from the internet, store a portion of it online, and caches it. That's a technical term. It means it stores it there. And you can access it at lightning speed. It's almost as if the internet doesn't exist. And that's the innovation. That's the power of innovation. And that's what we're looking to commercialize. And this part was taken from Khalil Arnold's um interview with him links to the toilet but yeah, um that's that it's really a good idea as you'll understand that you know there's a lot of places that don't have 
Wi-Fi and just imagine the impact that can happen if say a teacher works at a school she has Wi-Fi at home or she lives far so she has Wi-Fi she can just go so bam carry it home with her and charge it up because it can run on battery for eight hours that's one of the beauty as well and then like when I have class now she just carry box so she upload whatever she needs to upload or don't know whatever she needs to download um from the internet at her home charge it and then come school school is roughly eight hours so <sighs> when them answer something and just imagine if that this is just jamaica alone just think about the caribbean and a lot of developing countries outside of that when them have some other news that them supposed to drop but them not drop so <sighs> we just have to wait and see but good idea give them thumbs up for that i really like that and then you can't finish talking about the products without actually understanding what percentage does each part of the business produce and you'll probably see that a few of them have like 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 zero percent that means it's not launched as yet so they can't make the money from when i launch it but um here it goes all right so the revenue generation is as follows so the offline learning which is the box um contributes 22 percent of the earnings they have others which let me add a little stuff for them though I mean, like investments and so on four percent one-on-one for students is 25 percent um one-on-one -on -one for professional is zero percent as i say so my things don't flush out as yet so you can't expect them to make money if them not launch it does yet say so they also have content development which is basically them developing content for companies and so on and so forth that's one percent and their education and management information system emi s which is the government thing where they help digitalizing government stuff it is currently at 34 percent which is kind of good government money is sure it's just slow so you probably see them have a lot of rece receivables but don't even look at the financials yet fully and again till they're going to have a lot of receivables but how government money slow but it's short so maybe like months after trust me i've done work for the government and it in a pretty but i mean like intern i mean like let the outsource one of my t-shirt businesses that i had it took me to me took me a pretty like event done man them forget what even eat ice cream everything gone t-shirt wear wash wear out still not get your money yet but then it reach and yeah so government money sure but slow and that's really just like a rough overview of the company personally i like it um yeah it have a lot to flush out still you know you have covid coming to an end so it might affect them but the benefit that they have is that people are always want online classes and the full transition we have been used to the whole going school online for the past two and a half three years now so you're not gonna just jump back to zero but you can also remember that before they went fully online they were actually doing like walking face-to-face -face group setting and seeing that covid done now they're going jump back on so yeah that, that, that. they're going to do it so they're going to still have them classroom set up are even hybrid with some online some not i like the company because as the ceo said them spend like 60 mil a year on research and development and them obsessed with the online thing and the ai and so i ask of guys you can try una as well it is cool but me don't ramble out you will go to the financials and we'll call this video when i'm some dear so to the financials all right for me so basically this is a rough overview of the company in a one template and there's also the case where the user proceeds he never did get to actually see that in the video and just share my love on everything and see so basically the user proceed is well invest in next generation learning content for new and existing market invest in the company's adaptive learning technology that utilizes machine learning and artificial 
intelligent idea to personalize learning and to increase the company's working capital reserve. The company may also use a portion of net proceeds to acquire complementary business, product services, or technology. And you know, the minimum you can buy is a thousand shares and in increments of a hundred. Um, yeah, may I give you the video one day before you go? <laughs> Sorry, guys, hectic quick. All right, so the financials. Uh, we're not going to go too deep in it. I did make a few notes though, but before I just want you to look at this, I did explain the plans analysis to you guys. If not, you can check it out. But if you look really at the chart that reflects it, you can see the gray line is what is driving the growth to the company. And the gray line is assets divided by equity, which on this is leverage. So basically what they're doing is either they're borrowing money or they're getting some form of capital injection in order to facilitate the growth that they've been having. Everything else seems relatively flat and uh, yeah, everything else seems relatively flat. Net income has made a decent uptrend. Our net income is what helps them as well, but it's really flat compared to the drastic thing that happened between 2019, 2020, and 2021. And if we're on financial statements, it should reflect that as well. So, one, uh, we have seen a significant growth over the last five years of a CAGR, which is just average growth rate of around 75%. Revenues. Revenues are generated from being a subscription model that they have and then you know the expenses basically is the direct cost that associated with creating content and like operational platform and two thread and so on and so forth. But as I say we look for we look into their equity and we should see some major stuff and you remember the receivables i was talking about in the video here it is if you notice um and in 2019 they had actually gone government contract and so on and so forth you can see and in 2021 2020 sorry when they get the government contract and so on you can see the significant receivables until say your government money sure but it's slow so yeah um that's a lot so the receivables they can see increase significantly but then also if you look at the um loan and long-term convertible promissory notes you'll see that one name is funds from panjam and sajik were 50 and 25 mil respectively as i said <laughs> the dupont analysis does not lie is mostly leverage they use so they're getting money to facilitate the growth and then if you also look back again here so you can see the growth so it was like half and then they had like this 40 43 42 42 million dollar more in equity so yeah, and that's really it for the financials as i said i don't really on board anybody with my financial and something here but um yeah you can also show the the the, the cost of their intangible assets which i like them content has been steadily increasing in the assets so it has been increasing over the years so you know there's that that's good to know but one thing to note though if you notice that um though capital was what inject well, i was injected in them for them to facilitate growth. You see it has been tapering off and coming closer to um the return on assets and the profit margin. So this is a long run game for this company because when you get the capital from the IPO it going to carry back a bit up even though some of the loan going to be covered because it converts the shares and so on. It going to still go up and yeah and about some other things pending so you could probably still go but we'll see what happens and we'll probably visit this company back within like a year or so 
to see how they have been performing. So now, um, introduction. I had said that we're going to compare it to the their competitor, which is Edifocal, and this is just using their at IPO price when it just started. And you can see from here, so the company value is one. That's after everybody get them shares and everything, one billion eight hundred seventy eight million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It was the same thing for Edifocal, which is one million five hundred and seventy six million nine hundred and ninety three thousand six hundred and sixty five if you notice everything over here is look less except there than this this means that um any focal was drastically um i would say overvalued um based on their performance and the performance they already show it so you can pre them pe as a right now for one and one is 28 and at the time of IPO, the PE for Edifocal was 142.50. And you remember Edifocal financial statement is just literally losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money, and then finally making some profits um, at the end. So this is like a 509% um, higher PE compared to um, one and one. One and one. PE for forward, so they, they are projecting is 14.95. And you know, price for earning is basically how long it has to get the money. That they get one and a half or two years for um, any four pal, it's going to take you 28 years. One and one, and this is trailing, and this is basically a pass performance based on the print year to date. Um, the PE for the future, which is forward, is 14.95. And these are their projections. Um, and this is 31 so take 31 years and the pe file would be 14.95 for one and one so it's still a focal is still um guessing or forecasting 207.36 uh the pb which is how much you're paying versus the assets as i did say um one and one assets have been growing over total assets has been growing significantly as you can see these are quarters by the way so but you can see the assets being growing so that's also a good thing so back to it uh see so the pb is 13 so you're paying 13 times their assets as i already know 84 you're paying 509 times their assets which is three thousand eight hundred percent <laughs> all right and eps for trailing would be well as i already know it's 44 cents per share and eps for trailing for the focal was 0 0.23 and then the eps for the foundering will be 0 0.66 and for edifocal it would be 0 0.8 yeah so basically let me just fix this this is um a little mistake guys it's supposed to be um this over this yeah so basically their eps um one on one eps is two thousand like the trailing is two thousand times edifocal and their eps for the forward is 825 percent so from a numbers perspective um one-on-one -on -one seems like the better option and the valuation seeing that you know can if you know which price with i get a fair value at sajikor investments um actually valued at 134 which is weird seeing that they're the selling agent them now i'm gonna probably spruce it up other companies based on the numbers um jane for managers value is at 183 and victor mutual value is at 167 and these are all fair values so these are all guesstimates with numbers from actual analysts so me just doing the average 
it would equal to about 160 one $1.61 basically so yeah and that's really it for the financials so yeah to the outro yo <laughs> yo thank you guys for watching me just finished the introduction and it never did record but um i was just saying that thank you guys for really watching my videos i do put a lot of effort in it. you guys times are more valuable so yeah i just say really appreciate you guys watching my videos um it's a like come yeah still bless me i know about shipping i still get the bot drop so this can stop and i still get the lights i might get a camera for like show you guys a little bit more but um hey i really appreciate you guys watching my videos uh thank you very much and there's one thing you can always expect from me is that i will continuously be improving on my quality yeah that's just me so little by little as i just say thank you guys like share comment definitely subscribe to the friend to the friend because only 24 percent of the persons who actually watch my video actually subscribe and you guys watch more than half on video most yeah my, my retention is like 50 percent or 50 something but yeah so like share comment subscribe I'll catch you in the next video peace